I watched Hillary last night with we're going to give this, we're going to give that, we're going to give that. She, the poor woman, she's got to give everything away because this maniac that was standing on her right is giving everything away. So she's following. That's what's happening. This socialist slash communist, okay, nobody wants to say it. She's standing there listening to this guy. He's going to tax you people at 90%. He's going to take everything. And nobody's heard the term communist. But you know what? I call him a socialist slash communist, okay? Because that's what he is. So then you see her stand up. Now it's her turn. And she goes, oh, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do that. Because you got to win. Because she's not doing so well. And in a head-to-head -head poll, they just did that. I beat her by five or six points. I love it. I love it. It's good to play that again because that is the um, that is the quintessential that is the quintessential holding back of the American people. That's smear right there, commie socialist, commie commie little socialist, the communist slash socialist. Right? You heard President Trump, Donald Trump, say it in his own words. This is the stumbling block right now in our country. I'm going to try to do this with empathy and compassion, but I'm still, if, if the slurs, if the Bernie Sanders slurs continue, there's, a, there's someone operating, I don't know who it is, but there's a bunch of people loading up the uh, comments with uh, anti-Sanders uh, you know, propaganda. And so I'm just going to delete it if you do it. If you listen to what I'm saying and then you make a, a reasonable argument Against, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe, I'll maybe allow it. And it's not, it's not like I'm deleting uh, free speech. Look at it as, I'm the bouncer in a club, and when you make an ass of yourself once, twice, and a third time, I grab you and I throw you out the door onto the street, All right, because you, you're an ass, and that's how you're acting. So, <laughs> that's how this threat will be handled. The comments, anyway. But I want to talk about. Um, I made a uh, prediction. Right now, we're in. You know, we're. Uh, we're entering an election season, an election cycle. In America, we're always in an election season and an election cycle. Right? We're always leading up to the next election that we're going to vote our way out of and we're going to save the day. Everything is going to be perfect after this next election. And it never works out. It never, it never pans out to be what people expected it to be. However, there are movements in this country. Don't kid yourself. There are real movements that oppose the oligarchy. But commentary that you just heard from the President of the United States that tries to, to, to frame anything for the people, of the people, by the people, is somehow a, a social handout. And anything that benefits the corporations, the, the, the you know, multinational corporations and the billionaires, is somehow a, a way that stimulates the economy. Now, the opposite is the truth, but most people... Well, I, I guess, I don't, I don't know about most people, but a lot of people still believe that somehow the, the idea of giving health care to all people, uh, deleting student loan debt, making an economy that works for the 99% and not just the 1%, or, or not for the 1% at all, deflate the 1%, is somehow uh, anti-American or uh, anti-capitalism or anti-democracy. All these things. And I always point to, see Venezuela. See uh, other, some other Soviet communism from 1940. That's communism. Isn't that what Bernie Sanders is? He's in a communist? They try to, they try to sew the two together. S together. So I'm going to try to be as gentle as I can as I explain this uh, over and over again. So here is, uh, I want to show you a prediction I made. Because I think that the markets are heading... For disaster, a little while ago, I guess back in January of this year, 2019, when the market dipped for the first time, right? I, I made a prediction that the market, at, when it was at 23, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was at 23,218, uh, right? When the Dow was at 23,218, I predicted that the price target would be 18,847 which is basically the election day 2016 when Trump got in, that the prices would return to that level. Now, was I right? No, not yet. <laughs> but here's, here's, the, here's, the current, here's the current trajectory, right? We're in a debt bubble, 
and I just wanted, I mean, it's just a matter of time before it pops. But the markets are resisting it for a couple of reasons. One is that Trump is using what's commonly known as quantitative easing, which is an emergency measure to influx money into the system, just pour money into the system, print it, doesn't matter where you get it, just print it and pour it into the system, give it to the corporations. What they do is they they use stock buybacks to elevate the price of stocks. They lend the, the free money that they're getting to people like you and I at a, at a rate of, you know, maybe 19 to 30% interest. Right? So they're, they're creating a, they create an economy on debt. Right? Now, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot more people out there that know a lot more about the, the levels of debt and the, the savviness of that debt. But the, the bottom line is that at some point, people have to call in that debt. Right? So if, if you or I that are strapped at 30% interest, the, the worst that can happen is that we can't pay and we go bankrupt. But when a bank that's getting money at 0% still can't, their business model still can't function because they're on life support, because they have socialism for the, for the wealthy, so a socialist system where all they have to do is, is go ask daddy for more money and daddy gives them more money and then they, they recklessly disperse it. They don't know what they're doing and they put most of it in their pocket. I, that's the debt bubble. That's the, 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 the average man's, I guess, explanation of what a debt bubble is. Uh, and that's where we are right now. So it, you could see it. it's sometimes reflected in the market. And my, my, my prediction was that it would return to this line. You see this, this bottom purple line over here? It's at uh, 18. I think I, I put it at 18. Six four seven maybe yeah eighteen four 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 eight whatever eighteen hundred on the on the um, the Dow and you see this other line right here you see this diagonal line that is the lows connected from nine, from two thousand nine and the steady climb all through the Obama era Trump gets um, Trump is 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 possibly going to win there's uncertainty in the market it runs sideways Trump wins and it continues to go up. Because of again the quantitative easing, right, all that stuff. They they did raise the Fed did raise the interest rate a couple of percentage points, but but uh, now they're thinking about bringing it back down, right? Because it's again it's fake, the debt bubble. Right, so now what you have is this sideway pattern for the whole uh, since last year, actually a year and a half now. From the high, it's been going sideways. See, there's no, it, with big swings, volatility, right? So we're right here right now. Now, is that a bear market? No, it doesn't indicate a bear market. It recovered somehow right here when that big dip happened. That was when I called, I was trying to say that eventually it's going to come all the way down. But what's, what it's going to do is it's going to follow through. It, my prediction is it's probably going to follow through within the next six, to, six months to a year and begin the downward trajectory. And that's a disaster for Trump because, again, all Trump really has is this inflated market, this bubble pushing air into a bubble until it pops. Because, again, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit the 99%, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't benefit me when the stock market goes up. I don't have stock. 90%, 80% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck, 60% of Americans don't have $400 to their name, right? Three people in the country have more wealth than the bottom half of the country. All of new accrued wealth over the last 30 years has gone to the top 1%. Now, where is it, where is it logical? Where, where do people, you know, come to the, to the uh, realization that, oh yeah, Trump is for me. Trump gives tax breaks to the billionaires who don't pay tax anyway. Gives, gives more and more tax breaks to the corporations that don't reciprocate, that don't create jobs in this country, that take any profits they make and siphon it out of the country and put it in safe havens. Why would someone support parasitic organizations, corporations, 10,000 publicly traded corporations that don't reciprocate billionaires that do everything in their power to undermine democracy in our country. They buy politicians. You know, why would someone, why would, why would a regular person, my, 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 I, I need help in trying to understand that. 
why would a regular person uh, fall for that bullshit? Why, how, why? Because someone screams socialism slash communism? First of all, the, the issue in Venezuela is very different. Venezuela tried a socialized medicine. They tried a couple of socialized programs. We have socialism here, socialized programs as well. We have police, we have fire department, we have, you know, ambulance, city parks, state parks, right? These are social programs, highways, freeways, right? bridges, tunnels. These are, you know, public transportation, right? social security. You know, these are, these are our public social programs that were created during the New Deal. Uh, maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, right? These are, these are social programs. It's not socialism of Soviet Russia where all people are created equal, that the government will issue you your money, your monthly stipend where you will spend this money. No, we're talking about a different thing here. We're talking about something totally different. One is not the other. So you have the, the leader of the free world, Mr. Trump, saying that it is the same thing. Don't you feel lied to? Don't you feel screwed? I don't know. I mean, it just, let's look at some more statistics if you're not convinced. So a staggering, this is from Zero Hedge yesterday, 42% of Americans say they can't afford vacation. So we'll add that to the, the number of uh, statistics. A staggering 42% of Americans surveyed by bank rate say they, they chose to skip taking a vacation over the past year due to finances while around the third report they are less able to afford one uh, now versus five years ago. <laughs> Whatever. They're, they, they're less uh, able to afford one now than five years ago. Though 26% report the opposite. Okay, so, so people don't take vacations anymore. Half the country can't take a vacation. Half the, more than 80% of the country does, is, is paycheck to paycheck. And, and unemployment is probably around 20, 22%. The number that the, the, the official narrative number of 3.6% is a lie. It doesn't account for so many things. It doesn't account for people simply leaving the workforce. They stop looking for work. They just forget about this. This is a waste of time. And they're off the rolls. They are unemployed. They don't have a job. But they're not, they're not in the statistic of 3.6%. So the actual unemployment in this country, and look, look at, just look around you. Look at the homeless problems springing up all over the country. We have homeless people, you know, all over the place. Uh, in San Francisco, it's becoming like a shooting gallery. The, you know, Detroit, wherever, wherever it's, actually wherever it's warm. In New York now, you have all this homeless. Uh, people are homeless. People are, hum people are, are hurting. The malls are empty. I just, you know, kind of found out. You don't see that where I am. I'm in the bubble of New York City. You don't necessarily see empty malls. But now that's a new phenomena. Because why? Because all the money is going to the top 1%. Amazon, the guy made, you know, the guy's worth $120 billion. He pays no tax. He pays no tax. All he does is take. So... To deflate the 1%, to deflate the oligarchy, to deflate the, the current corporations, the 10,000 publicly traded corporations that don't reciprocate, to deflate them is not to say, oh, Conti, they'll, if, what are you going to do? They hire everybody. They, they're going to they leave. <laughs> Good. Why would, you, why would you keep a, look at it this way. Why would you keep a house guest around? A guy comes into your house and all he does is eat your food. He, 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 not only does he live on your couch, but he takes your bed. He shits in your, you know, he's in your bathroom all the time. He's always in the shower. He's always got his head in the refrigerator. You walk in and all you see, all, everything you try to do, you see, you got this guy, you see his back, his hand is in, now his hand is in your pocket. Why would you keep a guy like that around? Why would you keep someone in your life that all they do is take, take, take? Now, when you get rid of them, look at all that. Look at all that creative energy you have. Look at all that money you have. Right now, you have a renaissance, the possibility of a a, a grassroots uh, renaissance where small businesses begin to flourish again. Maybe you could put some stores in those in those malls again. Maybe you could have, you know, mom and pops popping up again. Why do you? Why would you want to support a system that doesn't? 
reciprocate to you. I just, I don't understand it. Maybe it's because, again, the smear is so powerful. The, the commie little socialist smear is something that people just are, refuse to get around. No, 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 that's not the American way. Well, it is the American way. The, the New Deal of FDR is, it is an American phenomenon. Seventy percent of the country wants a single-payer universal health care system that eliminates the middleman, the insurance companies. Get rid of them. There lies the problem. You can give affordable health care to all Americans, and I say Americans, not illegal immigrants. You can give health care, free health care, free. You can give health care to all American citizens at half the current price we spend right now where we don't cover everybody, and we bankrupt a, a lot of people trying to, you know, save themselves. People paying or dying, paying, you know, 10 times the amount for pharmaceuticals. So we, we, need, we need to go in that direction. That, that is the simple fact. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, voting our way out of it. Because I know there's a lot of people, oh, you fucking, you're snow blind, you still believe in Bernie Bernie bro, you're a Bernie bro, Bernie, Bernie socialist, commie, he owns three houses, his wife is a fraud, he's a, he's a bank embezzler, he drank, he drank vodka on his honeymoon with Russians in Russia, he's a Russian stooge, he's a sellout, he let Hillary Clinton fuck his ass, I've heard every one of them, every... Every, every Bernie smear is, I've, I've heard, right? we've all heard of it. So now let's talk, about, let's talk about a solution. Let's talk one last fact, and then we'll talk about the solution. So a recent analyst of Federal Election Commission uh, records found that there were 67 billionaires donating to the 2020 Democratic candidates. <laughs> 67 billionaires gave money to, to, to the Democratic candidates. Buttigieg has 24 billionaire donors. Harris has 17. Biden has 13. Bernie Sanders has none. Bernie Sanders does not have a single billionaire contributing to his campaign. And he is the leader of the party. He is the leader. In the, in, regardless of the fake, fake corporate polls, Bernie Sanders is winning so, so that's there. You have it. I mean, there, there. You, let's look at the 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 actual statistics. Uh, Harris, uh, Cory Booker, has the most 18, 18 oligarchs giving to his campaign. Um, Harris has uh, so Camilla Harris seventeen billionaires. These are all people that are not going to be president anyway. So who cares really? Uh, but, but the, the point is that Bernie Sanders has not sucked up to the oligarchy. Right? It is oligarchy. The Koch brothers, they have more money than Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, fucking two, throw two more banks on top of it. They have more, more assets than all of those entities combined. And what do they do? They buy elections. They give this congressman $30 million, that congressman $30 million, this senator $28 million. And they buy the election. They buy influence. And then when, the, when, these, when these fake candidates are elected, the candidates turn to the, to the rich donors and say, great, how can I help you? How can I repay the favor? And then the Koch brothers hand them a law, an a anti-climate law that burns another hole in the ozone and gives all the power to the oil companies because the Koch brothers are heavily invested in oil. All right, so the billionaires get their, get their favor and the people get fucked again. They don't, they're never going to get health, universal single-payer health care because of the pharmaceutical lobby. The billionaires that are making billions of dollars off of the, the, the pharmaceutical companies charging you 10 times the price. Right? So Again, what is, the, what, it, what is the solution? So you can't vote your way out of it. You can't vote your way out of this stuff. Right? Well, what, about, what about a political revolution? What does a political revolution really, really look like? Isn't it... Isn't it leading the country with policies rather than personalities. Principles, not personalities. If you're standing on the stage, if two, two men are standing on the stage, one Donald Trump screaming, commie little socialist, he's too old, he's this, he's that, he's the other thing. And you have the one Bernie Sanders petitioning for 
single payer health care, getting money out of politics so that the that these politicians can't continue to be paid off, to enforce real taxation on these corporations that refuse to pay tax, to deflate them, to break up the banks, stop giving them free money, right? to to bring the military industrial complex also down by ending counterinsurgency wars that we don't need because we don't have a real enemy. Right? Who would you vote for? Why, why on earth would you vote for a billionaire who, who spent most of his life in a casino business claiming bankruptcy, a talk show guy who's, you know, very charming and very funny. I get it. I mean, Trump is funny and charming. But why would, why would the average American go in the direction of their, their own, go against their own interests? That, my friend, right there is the, is the, uh, is the, the you know, the, the $64,000 question, right? Because I know that the elections are rigged. We have, a ri- we have a rigged system in our country. But the fact is, if 99% of the people come together, you could overthrow the rigged system. You, could, you can start a genuine civil war, a real, a real ousting of corrupt power. That's how you do it, by all people coming together and demanding policy, not demanding anything else. Let's drain the swamp. Well, there is, no, there is no such thing anymore as a swamp because Trump has replaced those with all his guys. None of them ever, none of the old swamp, the bankers from, the, from 2009, 2010, all the corrupt bankers, all the corrupt politicians that took the money, all the corrupt FBI that fudged you know, records and got various FISA reports, none of the corrupt candidates that deleted classified information, None of them, any of them have been indicted, jailed, or fined. None of them. Right? Some of them got fired, but whoop de do. Who cares about being fired? Like Comey, he gets fired, he goes writes a, writes a book, and he makes a million dollars. None of these people have been held accountable. And to sit and hold your breath and think that that is the solution is complacency, is, is uh, insanity, really. Uh, rather... If people come together on policy and support a figurehead like Bernie Sanders, who represents policy and always has been representing the policy all the way back till I don't know, 40 years, 50 years, his whole career, he has spewed policy for the people right? over and over again. Just go back to YouTube, fighting on your behalf. Now, again, there is, there, is, there is no perfect human being. Sanders, uh, I don't agree with it at all. He's, you know, he's, he's a little soft on the sec- Second Amendment. He, um, you know, he bought the, whether he believed Russiagate or he perpetrated the Russia stole the election narrative for whatever reason, I don't know. As far as him being a millionaire from writing a book, I don't hold that against him. As far as owning three homes, well, I don't hold that against him either because if you sell a best-selling book and you buy a summer home, well, that's your reward. If you, have, if you live in Vermont and you have a home and you spend most of your time in Washington, D.C., and you also own a home, I don't hold that against you either right? Well, because you're either going to have to rent a home in Washington or maybe buy one, and then you're, 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 you're putting equity back into your home rather than just paying rent. So I don't hold him as far as his wife and a botched deal of $9 million, whatever, college deal. I looked into that a long time ago and have since dropped that story because there was no validity to it. She, made a, she, was, a, she was an administrator in a college, and, and uh, it, the, the deal went bad, and that's all it was. It was just the deal gone bad. So I don't, there, is no, there is no legitimate smear. Is Bernie Sanders Maduro? <laughs> Is Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, Julio, you know, is, uh, Ch- Chavez, is, is, is Bernie Sanders Fidel Castro? These are, these are ridiculous. Is Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, the communist? Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a guy from Brooklyn who, uh, you know, who believes in the people and always has believed in the people. Has he, has he put his guard down? 
over the years, maybe a little bit since 2016, but it's a different game. You know, it's a different war. The point, the point is that this individual is still fighting on your behalf. He's probably 70 to 80 percent of the country will vote for him if he is the candidate. If any other candidate is put against Trump, Trump will win again. And none of the things that we talk about, none of the things that I'm talking about will, will transpire. Uh, that's all I'm trying to say about it. So, again, if you put down into the comments, now that, now that it's been flushed out 40 or 50 or 70 times, I don't know how many times I've said these points, if you put in that, that, that this country will never be a socialist, communist country, or you say that Bernie Sanders is a communist, he's a Bolshevist, he's a, he's a fucking commie thief, Jew, whatever you say, right? I'm going to delete your comments. Unless you have a logical reason. If you can show me a financial way that Trump benefits you better than Bernie Sanders, then I may, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let it slide. If not, go fuck yourself, man. Take your bullshit and go somewhere else. Go to another channel and dump your Russiagate nonsense, your fucking Red Scare shit. Like, go ahead, right? Because, and again, I know I'm only speaking to a, a small percentage of the commenting because it's, it's now a wave of, you know, little, little startups, little uh, uh, super PACs. They get together and now they, they combine their energies and they all have 10 sock accounts and they start to pile on their bullshit on top of you. So I know I'm, I'm venting on, on a, a very small amount of people that have uh, a, a social media reach using sock accounts. I realize that, but I'm still going to, I'm still going to delete your fucking comments. <laughs> Marcus Conti reporting.